I'm starting out my Star Wars vintage playset run with a bang, the Death Star Space Station. We're gonna go over the history of it, where I got mine, and for how much, clean it, restore it, put it together, and review it. So let's go. Welcome back to the journey. In 1977, Kenner got the license to produce the entire toy line for the Star Wars movies. But it wouldn't be until mid-1978 when the first action figures and ships were available. And it was the size of the action figures, 3.75 inches, that made the toy line perfect to create ships and vehicles for endless hours of play and imagination for kids to recreate scenes from Star Wars. But the toy designers had another aspect in mind, play sets. And the first of these play sets to be released by Kenner was the Death Star Space Station. When it was released in 1978, it sold for $17.87, which in today's prices with inflation is $83.52. So it was a pretty penny for mom and dad to put this under a tree or for a birthday present. It dominated the toy aisles in stature as the toy itself stands 20 inches tall and has four floors with play options on each floor. And it came with a creature, the Dinoga Trash Monster, which was only shown as an eye in the movie. So kids got to see the fully formed monster that had a sharp toothed mouth on its chest. Now to get one mint in sealed box is downright rare and it would also cost you a pretty penny. In fact, they are so rare to find in this condition that there is no eBay sales data for the last eight years. You can find good condition loose examples for average prices of $100 and expect to pay double that for examples inside the box starting at averages around 200. The prices will increase with additions like inserts and condition, but for a complete example, with inserts, parts in working condition, and in excellent shape, I've seen prices ranging from $300 to $500. Now, let's talk about variants of this playset. The first one is one that often gets overlooked. It's a box variant. The first was issued in 1978 and has the LP logo on the front, which stands for Long Play. Long Play was a marketing initiative by Kenner to let parents know that this toy has been tested and is durable enough to have lasting value and is made with materials that will withstand many years of play, giving the parents value in the toy they buy their kids. On the 1979 release of the playset, the LP isn't present. So if you have one, go check it out right now to see which variant you have. It won't affect the price as these were only made for the first Star Wars release of the toys. And even though this sold very well and was a popular item with kids, they discontinued manufacturing this playset when the Empire Strikes Back line of toys was released. I happen to have the 1978 LP version. The box art is very iconic. The front shows two kids at play with the orange background that makes this box stand out on shelves. And a quick story about this picture. Recently, a man went inside a vintage toy shop in Pennsylvania called Retro and Rad and asked if they had a Death Star space station in a great looking box, and they did. And the man buying it was none other than the kid on the box. That's right the one wearing the yellow turtleneck. I mean, I think that's pretty rad. On the back is the line art version of the front photo, and on the sides, various color photos of the levels. The top and bottom have the Star Wars logo with the name of the playset underneath. Due to the expensive costs in the manufacturing process, not only to make this toy, but to ship it, and also the bulky nature of the toy took up so much room on shelves that European markets and other world markets chose not to distribute this toy. That brings us to the next variant, or re-engineering of this toy. The Death Star playset from Palatoy. Made primarily out of heavy stock cardboard, this was the alternative to the Death Star space station in markets who refused to carry it. This version was never released in the US, but the only market to get both versions distributed to toy shelves was Canada. Those lucky so-and-sos. So will I get one? Well, not at the moment, as some of these are hard to find inside a box and in great condition for a fair price. But I would love to add it to my list after I do the entire USA run of the play sets. All right, so for now, let's open this up and see what's inside. And lucky for me, I have the original instruction sheet that it came with. So let's start by showing all the parts that this comes with. One roof, a plastic rope, laser cannon, third floor that comes with a seat for the laser cannon, one ledge, two thick stock cardboard instrument panel walls, the Dianoga Trash Monster, the second floor ledge, 
two parts for the bridge assembly. The first floor, a trap door, the trash compactor, the elevator shaft, the bridge column support, three first floor columns, three second floor columns, two third floor columns, and finally, two support walls. I am missing the foam for the trash compactor, but in my loose creature run, I bought a separate trash compactor for my loose Dianoga trash monster, and it came with the foam in a plastic container. And if I find another one for sale that I can keep with this playset, I will. But for now, that's missing, and it's often missing in a lot of playsets that I see for sale. I'm also missing the cardboard insert, and this is what it would have looked like if you're looking for one. I probably won't go hunting for one, but if I find someone selling an original insert, I may have to rethink about buying it. I'm also missing the original mini Kenner catalog, but I can always pick that up separately at a fair cost, and I've seen sellers posting these for about $15 sometimes. And I'm missing the original plastic baggies that would have contained the loose pieces, but it is super rare to find an example with those still inside the baggies. Sometimes they've been sitting inside a box and getting dusty, so when you buy these and take them home, the first thing you wanna do is give them a good clean. And I use all of these tools right here. And the first one may surprise you, it's a makeup brush kit. I use this to lightly dust the entire item, and I really try to get dust brushed out from cracks and crevices. Then I use canned air to get the areas that are very hard to get. I like using canned air because sometimes there is a lot of dust buildup that happens in certain areas, and before I wash the item, I try to get as much dirt off as possible so it doesn't get caked up after it's wet. After that, I separate the parts into ones that I can clean in the sink and ones that I can't due to stickers being applied. For the items that have stickers on it, I use these wipes. They are fragrance-free wipes. They are water and alcohol-based. I wouldn't use these on collectibles that have paint applications on them, but since this playset is mold-injected color plastic, it's fine for this. After I apply the wipes, I let them air dry away from the sun. And just for a note, I never put any of my collection in direct or indirect sunlight ever. My whole collection room, it's completely blacked out. And I do that to avoid any unnecessary UV light that may hit my figures and make them fade and deteriorate over time. For the items that I want to lightly rinse and clean, I get warm water ready and add a drop of mild dish soap. Then using a soft toothbrush, I gently clean the surface of the items. Then I let these dry for a day, again, out of direct sunlight. And all of these items that I use to clean are linked below in the description of this video. And they're also available at my website, thepadawancollector.com, in the Collector Depot section. So now that everything is clean, let's put it together using the instruction sheet. And I looked all over the internet trying to find an instruction video to help me put this together, and I couldn't find one anywhere. So I'm just gonna make my own. So here you go. First, snap the trap door into place on the first floor, then attach the support wall to the first floor. Hook the first floor into the elevator shaft, then attach the ledge to the topmost rib area of the elevator shaft. Add the first floor columns and make sure you place them facing the correct way. They only fit in one way, so if you're trying to force them in, don't. They should slide in without force. Add the bridge support column. Next, connect the bridge to the second floor. The bridge extends in and out. Then place the second floor onto the floor columns. Add the second floor columns to the second floor. And again, the columns only fit in one way, so don't force them in or you're gonna break them. Place the third floor onto the columns and hook this onto the elevator shaft. Next, place the third floor columns into place. One of my columns is unfortunately broken, but it still works. And if I can, I'll try to replace that. Then place the roof over the elevator and connect it to the columns. Next, slide the trash compactor into the first floor slot. The blue trash compactor gear should be facing the outside. Hang the small plastic rope on the hook under the third floor. Now carefully slide the instrument panels into the slots. These can easily fray, so really take your time with these. Now place the laser cannon on the third floor. If something doesn't fit well, it's most likely backwards or upside down. To make the trash compactor active, turn the gear to compress or detract the mechanism. This is where you can recreate the famous trash compactor scene. 
The trap door on the second floor opens up to have the figures fall into the trash compactor. And there's a door to the trash compactor so that our heroes can escape the trash monster. And for the famous bridge scene, you can hang Luke and Leia up to make their escape from the stormtroopers. And there are plenty of figure pegs throughout the entire playset that you can arrange figures on for display. On the elevator shaft, you can open it by turning the transparent door. There's a plastic latch on the side where you can lift the characters up to the next floors and you can turn the latch to lock the elevator into place. On the top floor for the laser cannon, now the one that came with my playset doesn't latch on correctly. There's a spring mechanism that's broken on mine, but lucky for me, a viewer named Phil J has generously sent me a new spring and latch mechanism. So let's put that on. First, remove the third floor and take the cannon off, as well as the cannon seat. At the base of the cannon seat are two screws. Remove those with a Phillips head screwdriver. This removes the bottom panel holding the spring mechanism. You can see that mine was broken. Now let's replace this with the unbroken latch and new spring. Place the latch with the circle base down the hole and the spring on top. Then line the base cover over the top and replace the screws. And it works. The cannon can swivel and rise up and down. And there's a lever. When you push it, the cannon explodes. So how did I get this? And how much did I get it for? Well, I traveled from San Diego to Los Angeles on a small road trip to the Frank and Son Collectible Show. This is one of the biggest places under one roof to find collectibles of all kinds. And if you want to see my full review of this place, there's a link in the description of this video. I made an entire map of the place so you know where the best spots are. And one of them is where I got my playset from. Booth 611, a ton of Star Wars vintage. This shop is called Enforce Collectibles. Loose action figures, carded, boxed items, ships, play sets, and some items that actually cost an arm and a leg. And they had the item that I was looking for the Death Star space station in a great looking box. Now, I just went over all the items and what I'm missing. So when you're shopping for vintage items and you see something like this that you like, it's very important not only to know what the complete box items are going for in the current market, it's also important to do your homework and know exactly what comes inside the box. So you can use that info to either accept the price being offered if everything's included, or if some items are missing or broken, this is your time to use that knowledge to negotiate a price with the seller. Now this item was not complete in that it was missing the cardboard and plastic inserts and the foam and the gun was damaged as well. So I did use that information to drive down the price a bit. The seller was asking 250 for it but I managed to get this down to 200 even if I paid for it in cash which I did. So now I can mark this playset off my list officially. The first playset that we bought on this run and we got it at the Frank and Son Collectible Show for $200 even. And you can download this collecting sheet that not only has the playsets listed, but also every loose figure, carded figure, ships, vehicles, mini rigs, carrying cases, tops cards, 12 inch figures, basically the entire Star Wars vintage Kenner line. So download yours in either a PDF form, PowerPoint, or Apple Keynote. And these sheets are fully editable, so you can modify for your own collection, or you can use this as a template for other lines like Transformers, G.I. Joe, practically anything. So what did you think of this first episode of me delving into the world of Star Wars vintage playsets? And what did you think of what I got here today? I think this is one of the best vintage playsets out there, not just for Star Wars, but all toy lines. The durability, the multiple levels for endless play, and the fact that it's a great display for your toys makes it something that you can actively use and also place in a display configuration for all your toys. It stands the test of time, and for this episode, I'm glad I got it right away. But for my next episode, the Jabba the Hutt action playset. I put out a poll on YouTube asking you if the Jabba the Hutt action playset is a playset or should it be in the creatures category. So come back next week to find out if I put this on my list. So if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. That does support the channel. And if you want to see more Star Wars and collecting content from me, then please consider subscribing. And also hit that notification bell so you know when episodes go live. I post videos every Sunday with bonus content throughout the week.
and thanks to viewer Clint H for these amazing handmade replica props. The bounty hunter fob from The Mandalorian and the plans for the Death Star. These are quality pieces and I'm very honored to have them inside my collection. And as always my friends, thank you and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.